is living and active. It is sharper than any two edged sword. It is life and it has the power to give life. God's word has the power to rebuild and remold your life. Let God rebuild your life as he speaks through his oracle. Reverend Dr. Kayo Deyayinde, the senior pastor, First Baptist Church, Okeyimi, Adwekiti, Ekiti State. God bless you. I've been talking about the concept of progress. We have looked at what progress is. We have looked at what progress is not. We started talking about the tools that God has given us for progress. All you need, the tools you need for progress. We have talked about the tool of your mind. We have talked about the tool of your mouth. We, have, we started talking about the tool of your men. And that we started last week Sunday. Your men. By the grace of God, next week Sunday, we'll be talking about the tool of your moves. And the last Sunday, we'll be talking about the tool of your music. In continuation to what the Lord told us last week about the tool of your men, we have read the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 B that is where our concentration will be more today as we interpret the theme that God has placed before us Proverbs 18 24 B says but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother the part A says a man of many companions may come to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I will read two more English Bible translations. I read the NET and I read the BBE for clearer understanding. The NET says a person who has friends may be armed by them. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. BBE says there are friends who may be a man's destruction but there is a lover who keeps nearer than a brother I come again the BBE there are friends who may be a man's destruction but there is a lover who keeps nearer than a brother over the years I have come to discover from my understanding of the scriptures that when God gives a mandate upon the destiny of any man, especially a mandate for progress, a mandate for breakthroughs, a mandate for exploits, a mandate for excellence, God does not give that mandate to that man to undo alone. God equally surrounds him with at least one man with whom his mandate will be driven i give you three specific examples from the book of genesis the first book of the bible when god made man and god put adam in the garden of eden god looked at adam and god saw the magnitude of the assignment that adam had to undo God saw that if Adam would progress, Adam could not undo the assignments of the Garden of Eden alone. And God himself said, it is not good for a man to be alone. Genesis 1, 28 said, I will put before him someone who is going to help him. So what did God do? God created Eve to assist Adam in fulfilling the assignment that he had given him so that Adam could have breakthroughs so that Adam could progress let me give you another one when Moses who was supposed to be the human deliverer the human messiah of the people of Israel from the, from the tyranny 
of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. When God wanted to, to, to raise someone who was going to deliver the people of Israel, God raised Moses. But God knew that Moses could not have accomplished the assignment that he gave him alone. And right from the credo, God started raising at least one person to help Moses to progress. The first person that emerged into the destiny of Moses that helped Moses not to die from the peril of the people of Egypt was the daughter of his enemy. The Bible says when Moses was laid in the basket beside the river, it was that time that the daughter of Pharaoh came to the river with her entire maybe to bath or to do whatever and when she saw him the bible says she had mercy on moses and right from that time you will discover that at every stage of the life of moses god was always sending at least one person to assist him to progress at every point of his life at the point when he was going to Egypt to appear before Pharaoh for the first time, God sent Aaron. And when he started the assignment during the Exodus, God was always putting a man beside him, and that was Joshua. So you discover that at every stage. Let me give you one more so that you will not say all these quotations or examples are from the Old Testament. When Jesus Christ, our Lord, will come to the world, God brought Jesus through one person and who was that one person talk to me church Mary and Joseph Mary and Joseph Mary and Joseph just Mary just Mary that is to prove the fact that if you have not noticed it before I like you to please think deep and see that you need at least one person for you to get to where God has ordained for your life. You need at least one person for progress in life. Life is not to be undoed alone. We're going to come to that to see a man who undoed his life alone. And at the end of everything, where he ended up. When God wanted to send Moses to deliver the people of Israel, it was a desire in the heart of Moses. Moses knew that God would not have sent him to do that kind of adult task alone. The concern of Moses was not that Moses was afraid of leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. It wasn't that Moses was afraid to handle the people of Israel even in the wilderness. No. But the concern of Moses was that Moses knew that God will not just send a man to go alone without bringing beside him an assistant. So in Exodus chapter 33, Exodus 33, Moses was telling the Lord, you have been telling me, I am going to send you, you are going to lead my people, I am going to go before you, I'm going to do this. In, in, in Exodus chapter 33 from verse 12, let me read from verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moses said, you have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not told me whom you will send with me. Does that make any meaning to you? Moses knew that God had gone before him. Because he saw the mighty hand of God. He parted the Red Sea, yes. He went before them in the pillar of cloud by the day. And in the pillar of fire by the night, yes. But Moses still said, you have not told me the person the man that you have assigned for me to help me on this journey you have not told me who will go with me you have not told me the man the woman the person my own person who is going to drive me to success in this journey god i want you to tell me that i want you to reveal that to me because i know when you created the world when you created adam and you put him in the garden of eden you assign someone to complement his efforts. You assign someone to help him to drive him to the place that you have ordained for him. You assign someone to assist him to fulfill his mandate. Who are you sending with me? I pray for somebody in church today. May the Lord open your eyes to your destiny helper. 
I didn't hear your amen very well. And may the Lord open the eyes of your destiny air pass to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So our concentration in the part B of the subtitle, your men, is identifying your own men out of many. Identify your own men out of many. Last week Sunday, we have spoken about your men. When we are talking about your men, we mean your people. We mean the people that God has assigned to help your life. We mean the people that God has arranged, the people that God has aligned on your path to bring you to where he has ordained for you. That is where the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 becomes in. The Bible says, even in part A of that verse 24, in that group of people, your men, in that group, there are no many people. Very few people are there. In that class, you don't find so many people there. In the class of the friends that sticks closer than a brother. Since there are so many companions, some companions, even if there are so many, you are not so secured amongst them. You cannot tell what those many companions or many friends could do for you. There may be many people. There may be many people who appear to be your friends. There may be many people who appear to be your companions. There may be many people who are coming close to you and they are presenting themselves as though they are your destiny helpers. But the Bible says that there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother that is a class on its own and in that class you don't have so many people in that class you have very few people in fact in that class you may have just one person in the class of friendship that sticks closer friendship that sticks closer friends who will come to you to risk their lives to do whatever very soon we're going to be seeing the characteristics of such friends the characteristics of such men but the Bible says that there is a friend. Read that passage very well. The Bible did not say there are friends who stick closer than brothers. That's A. Article A is intentional. The presence of that article A there is intentional. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So many people have interpreted that passage to mean that that friend is God. That friend is Jesus. Yes. That friend can be divine. That friend can be human. But the key thing that the word of God is making us to understand as we are connecting it to the interpretation of this concept is that God assigns people to help you in the journey of your life. God assigns men. You need them to run the journey of your life. You don't always need many of them because they may appear many. But those who will really render the help that you need, those who will really take you to where God has ordained for you, those who will really orchestrate your progress may not be many. So God's word says that it's a friend that stays closer than a brother. I wrote something here. Many of us believe that success in life is a game of number. You think my success will be determined by the number of people who follow me or the number of people who believe in me or the number of people who are coming to my head or the number of people who are running to me or the number of people who are coming to my rescue. No, success is not a function or product of number in the school of progress. It is a function of the commitment. It is a function of the reality. It is a function of the sincerity of the kind of friends who are coming to you. Who are coming to you. It's a function of the sincerity, the commitment, the dedication of the kind of people who are appearing to you at your point of need. May you have correct people in the ship of your life all the days of your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to look at the life of David as a case study. We're going to be looking at the life of David as a case study and we're going to also be looking at the life of Gideon, one of the judges of Israel as a case study. Then finally, look at the life of Samson and we're going to conclude with that. David was a man who was anointed by God to cut a long story short as recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 16. He was just alone in the bush taking care of the sheep that his father had committed to his shepherdhood 
and he sat down he was doing that judiciously and meritoriously and right in that place a message of congratulations reached him in that place where you are seated in that family in that your business in that your school on the streets in your office in the marketplace messages of congratulations will reach you i didn't hear the amen of those who believe i didn't hear the amen of those who believe i didn't hear the amen of those who believe when the word of god is coming the power of god is dovetailing heat the bible says as jesus was teaching in the temple the power of God was there to heal the sick. So don't take the word of God that is coming from this pulpit for granted. And I prophesy again upon the life of somebody. In that place where you are relaxing, where you are resting in the Lord, where you are trusting in the Lord. Messages upon messages upon messages of congratulations will reach you. In the name of Jesus Christ that message that your destiny is awaiting that tiding that your life has been waiting for for years that instruction that your life needs at that point where you are where you are waiting on God and you are looking unto him that message will come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Sit down. David was just sitting down. He was just doing his own legitimate duties. And a message reached him. That they are waiting for you at home. Why are they waiting for me at home? There is a message from somewhere for you. And Moses and David ran home. And when he got home. God said to Samuel. This is the boy. Anoint him. And David presented his head and oil came upon him. Little wonder he said, thou anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows. May your cup and my cup overflow every day. <laughs> when the anointing of the Lord came upon him, that anointing of God that came upon David was not the anointing to sit down. When the anointing of God comes upon a man, it's an anointing for excellence. Anointing for that man to protrude. Anointing for that man to progress. Anointing for that man to present himself in high places. Anointing for that man to be, to be presented to the world. That is what the anointing of the Lord did. But that anointing came upon David. And when the anointing of God came upon David, that anointing was waiting for expression. Waiting to manifest itself in high places. An, an occasion just arose one day as recorded in first samuel chapter 17 there was a war between the people of israel and the philistines led by goliath the giant of the philistines and when he appeared at the battlefield for 40 days the people of israel including their king saul were running away from goliath anytime goliath appeared like this everyone will run away and what Saul, the king of Israel, needed at that time was help. But there wasn't anybody among the soldiers of Israel who could present the help that Saul needed. If you go to the word of God in that first Samuel chapter 17, I want us to turn our Bibles to that first Samuel chapter 17 and verse 8. We discover that the help. The, the kind of help that Saul needed at that time was not the help of many people. It was just the help of one person. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 8, Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servant of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. How many men? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. How many men did Saul need at that time? Eh? Just one man. Were there not men at the battlefield? Talk to me, church. Were there not men? There were men. There were men with their hammers. There were men with their swords. There were men with their arrows. There were men with their fighting instruments or gadgets. There were men standing tall, wearing their boots, wearing their helmets. But the man that Saul needed had not arised. But when David appeared, David said, what will the king do for the man who brings down this man? Who brings down this Goliath? Who kills this Goliath? 
And as they were talking to him, he went to Eliab, his brother, his own very brother, for you to know that your brothers may not always be your helpers. Your brothers may not always be your helpers. In fact, it is interesting for you to know that the one that God will use to move you to where you are supposed to be may not even be a believer in Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand and say, God can use anybody. Say it louder. To give me that which my life desires. Say, God will use anybody anywhere to take me to my next place. God will use anybody from anywhere to fulfill his counsel for my life. That is just the truth. That's just the truth. He turned to his brother, Eliab, and he spoke to Eliab. When Eliab discovered that he was making findings about some things, hear what Eliab said about his brother. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 6 and 7. All right, let's read 1 Samuel 17, verse, um, verse 27. All right. They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, This is what will be done for the man who kills him. Verse 28. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the man, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. That is how this, the, the, the voice of a detractor sounds. Read that statement of Elia very well. You find some of the attributes of the comments of a detractor. They make you feel that you don't matter. They make you feel that your, your, your efforts are not appreciated. They make you feel that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are a non-entity. They make you feel that you are not performing. They make you feel that you are not making impact. And I think that was an expression coming from the heart of someone who was embittered to a man who was making progress. Who was supposed to take the oil when, Moses, when Samuel went to the house of Jesse? Talk to me. And who was talking there? Eliab had not overcome the bitterness he had against David. So when he saw David, he said, what have you come to do here? With whom have you left the few sheep? The few sheep. Why did he put the word few? To make David feel dejected. But that is not where we are going. But what was the response of David to what his brother said let's go back to that first Samuel chapter 17 we just read verse what now all right verse 28 then verse 29 everybody let's read verse 29 now what have I done said David can't I even speak verse 30 he then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter and the men answered him as before what was David doing there? When David made a comment and David was making progress and he needed a man also who will enlighten him, who will help him to fulfill his dream, he went to his brother and his brother said rubbish. What did David do? Did David sit down and start sucking his fingers? I told you last week Sunday, you get yourself unnecessarily worried when you discover that many people are not accepting you. You don't have any problem with many people. You only need few people God has assigned to help you to fulfill your destiny in life. Stop sucking your fingers. Stop crying over spilled milk. When people reject you, still make progress. Turn to somebody and say, still make progress. I didn't hear you very well. Say it again. Say it to another person. When David had what his brother said, David was not dejected. He wasn't dejected. The Bible says he turned away from him and he moved to another man. In order to say that this man is not my man. He may be my brother, but he's not a brother that sticks closer than, he's not a friend that sticks closer than a brother. 
Yes, he was his biological brother, but he was not the brother he needed at that time. He was not the man he needed at that time. He was not the helper he needed at that time. And David knew how to handle situations like that. The Bible says he walked away and he was looking for a man who will give him what he needed. At the battlefield, David was looking for that one man who will make him carry the day david was looking he was not he didn't allow himself to just sit down and be mourning over what his brother said he kept looking for the man who will give him the right word he kept looking for the man who will give him the right support he kept looking for the man who will give him the right backing he kept looking for the man who will navigate for him he kept looking for the man who will say the correct thing that will ginger him up to fight this foolish goliath he kept looking for the man who will support him with the right word with the kind expression and he found one you will find yours too i said you will find yours too i said you will find yours too in the name of the lord jesus where did he find one let's read on in verse 32 david said to saul let no one lose heart on account of his, this this philistine your servants will go and fight him church read verse 33 But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock. Everyone read verse 35. <laughs> to cut it short, having listened to the comment, the courageous comment of David, let's read verse 37 together everyone verse 37 let's read verse 37 together let's go the lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of these philistines let's read the latter part of it saul said to david go and the lord be with you verse 38 everyone there saul dressed david in his own tunic he put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. At last, David found the man. You will find your own man too. You will find your own person too. You will find your own people too. Keep looking for them by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You will find them and they will find you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for joining us today on Seasons of Grace. For prayers and inquiries, call 023-810-6893 or 70 6438 or 706-841-6438 or you can email us at fbcado at gmail.com or visit our website at www.firstbaptistchurchado.org These are some of our programs through the week. Sunday, English service starts by 7.30 a.m., followed by Sunday school and Yoruba service thereafter. On Monday, we have a followed-up school and inquiries class by 5 p.m. By Tuesday, MMU and WMU, RA and Lydia meets by 5 p.m. Wednesday is Bible study and prayer meeting from 5 to 7 p.m. First three days of every month, we start afresh with the Lord, 6 to 7 a.m., while we observe our three days prayer and first in last three days of every month join us season of grace comes back on the same time next week remain blessed yeah.